Yeah, make your way over to the kitchen because you're gonna love our next guest who is making delicious noodles that taste as good as healthy feels. That's right. Please welcome award-winning chef and author of Real Food Heals, Seamus Mullen. Welcome, Seamus. Thank you're you. So to have oh, you thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. This is very exciting. Yeah. So you basically, you have really perfected chef quality food. You perfected it and turned it into healthy food as well. So stuff that we're used to going yeah. out to like really fancy restaurants and then leaving and going, oh, that was delicious, but maybe I shouldn't have eaten that. <laughs> You've taken recipes like that and lightened yeah. them up, but you haven't sacrificed any of the flavor. No, and I had to, I didn't have a choice. You know, for a long time, I was doing really well as a professional chef, my career was taking off. I'd worked in Spain for a number of years, but my health was doing a nosedive. Oh, I was boy. super, super sick. So I had to reevaluate my relationship with food and I realized that for a long time, the word healthy food had been kind of a dirty word. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of turn it around and show that wow. with, a, with a little bit of a, a love and a little bit of oh a, a, a chef's approach to, to cooking well. Yeah, that's me. How much weight did you lose? Oh, you know, a pound or two. What? <laughs> yeah. No, I'd I lost say. about 60 pounds, but oh it, was mostly, it was mostly inflammation. I was living with rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, boy. And so I couldn't be very active, and, uh, and I realized that there was a direct correlation between the foods that I ate and how I felt. So changing my relationship with food and changing the way that I ate was um, probably the most important tool to help me overcome RA. And I'm off meds, I've been off meds for about seven years. Oh my gosh, that's Super wonderful. healthy. And, uh, and I owe it all to this kind of stuff. Eating real yeah, food. that's wonderful. And Cameron has made his way over to the counter, and yeah. I know he loves hearing that kind of stuff. I do. I do. I've, I've made language. similar transformations. Really, with food alone in my own experience. So yep. I'm, I'm right there with you. Good cool. That's right. Cool. Well, you guys are going to love this. Mm. This is pasta without the guilt of the exactly. pasta. Right. It's yeah. Zucchini noodles. It's all so, also some good stuff. Yeah. That's right. Orly, Ken, Cam, Cam dig it. I almost called you Kim. Well, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, Kim. Yeah. Kim. So it worse. starts with zucchini noodles. It starts with zucchini noodles or zoodles. Right. Yeah, and I, you know, I was really, really reticent to go the route of doing these spiralized vegetables for a long time because I felt like it was just such an Instagram thing. Like a fad. But it's really nice. It's a great way to get more vegetables into your diet and not just have a salad. So right. these are these are noodles, and all you do is you know use a little spiralizer, and you just twist like this. I really and you love these, the spiralizer. These are great. Yeah, you can it's see it's so very fun and soothing. Yeah. <laughs> do you need a spiralizer though? You don't, but everyone should get one. Okay. Because they're not that expensive. But if you don't have one, you can use a mandolin, which is um you know they're a little more dangerous because you could slice oh. yourself. You got to be careful. Yeah. And then a sharp knife, and you can cut them into strips. You can uh, also strips. buy them. Um, Pre-cut pre yeah. like this too. Exactly. Right. So that's that's basically, that's basically all there is to it. Do. Super super simple. You can go all the way through, and you know zucchini's great, but you can do any vegetable you want really. You can do it with um. I use uh, celery root a lot, oh, okay. which is a really oh. nice vegetable to do it with. Yeah, and carrots also all the beets. Really great. You can do it with beets. Beets are fantastic, and you can do them both raw or like we've done here, which is to blanch them. Okay, so it is super important yeah. if you were going to cook your zucchini noodles to just cook them for. Literally a second. Literally just a few seconds. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring a big pot of boiling water up to a boil with salt, sea salt in it. Okay. And then you'll take your noodles, drop them in for about five seconds, and immediately go into an ice bath with ice water to stop the cooking. So five seconds top. Yeah, Literally seconds. five seconds? That's all yeah. it takes. It's like you just drop it in and plunge what? it. And what happens is you lock in all the chlorophyll, you get that bright green color, and you don't overcook the noodles. Okay. They just stay just cool. gen gently cooked. So that's all you're gonna do. So once you've done that, and then I use a salad spinner to get out the excess water. Oh, uh, right, because zucchini has a lot yeah. of water, that's But true. if you don't have a salad spinner, you can just put them in a, you know, you can put them in a colander with lined with paper towel or with a kitchen towel. Okay, so now we make you're our delicious make pesto, which pesto. is not your typical pesto. No, it, not at all. So we're gonna use a lot of the same ingredients you might find in pesto. These are some scallion tops. Okay. Um, everything in the garlic family, garlic as well. All right. The allium family, if you will. Um, are really, really good prebiotic foods. That means they're foods that have lots of fiber that feed the healthy bacteria in our guts. Okay, that's, that's important. The, that's oh. the foundation of our immune system, that's is right. our, our, the bacteria in our guts, so we wanna feed them. We're gonna add in mint and dill. So both of those, you got Why those mint herbs. and dill? They add What's a lot of flavor. I well, know you know. Yeah, there's a lot of benefit. Yeah, they're, they're natural <laughs> antioxidants, but to me the real benefit is they really taste good. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Lemon zest, and okay. then my favorite, favorite here, these, these are the little fish that make Friends and enemies quickly. I love anchovies. You no, know, I do too. Anchovies are great. They're full of omega-3 fatty acids, which are really good for brain function. They're mm -hmm. good for um, for producing uh, healthy cholesterol. So they're really important. And then salt and pepper. Anchovies, when, I feel, are polarizing. They totally are. They're totally, you know, some people love them. Do you guys like anchovies? Love them. Yeah, do you, when, when uh, Susan Lucci was on the show for uh -huh. a while, and she said that she starts every day 
with anchovies. Oh, really? And if I could yeah. look like her, I'm going to go <laughs> Do it. and say exactly. anchovies all day yeah. is a good She's idea. Yeah. Right. So this is just lemon juice? Lemon juice. And okay. then here's some olive oil. Save me a little bit because we're going to use it. So use most of it, okay. but save me a little bit in the end. Okay. This is extra virgin olive oil. I always use olive oil from Spain, which is really, in my opinion, the best quality olive oh, oil. Oh, those are fighting words. Yeah, I know. Uh-oh, oh, look out. <laughs> but I lived, I lived in Spain for years, and I just can't, you know, I can't give it up. So go ahead and um, go ahead and pulse we're that up. Yeah. Before we put in the before secret ingredient? Yeah, exactly. Okay. You get that. Secret ingredient's pretty cool. All right. So we're going to get that going. You're going to get it nice and well pureed. Okay. That's good. We'll start good there. Good enough. And then instead of using pine nuts, we're going to use pistachios. Yeah. So why pistachios? Well, one, the color green goes really well with the green pesto. That's good. Yeah, it matches. And then they're also a great source of fat and protein, which I'm, you know, I'm super into. Pine nuts are great as well, but I love pistachios. So we'll add these in, and I like a little texture, so you're just going to kind of pulse so not a little bit. Too. Okay. Not super, super pureed. Swivel the whole thing to your Let's left. See. Boom, boom. There we go. Oh, wow, Cameron. Wow. Look at that. All this time awesome. in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, wow. All exactly. I get to do in the kitchen is figure out the, like, the appliances. That's good. Other that's great. That. Okay. And then we have, this is what we get. We get a beautiful pesto here that's got a little bit of texture to it. Oh. And then we're going to take that along with our zoodle noodles here. Zoodles. And we're going to plate. Yeah, we're going to plate. It's right as easy onto, as that. Yeah, it's super easy. So it's kind of a salad in a way. Do you ever use the spaghetti squash? That's something that... that uh, oh, that's the best. Yeah. yeah, you roast the spaghetti squash, yeah. which is not squash made out of spaghetti, despite what you might think. <laughs> um, and you can go ahead and add a little of that on top. And I apologize if we covered this quickly. I know you talked about blanching and going the hot mm -hmm. water and the nice cold water. One of the things that happens to me when I use the uh, zucchini noodles is it, my sauce gets really watery. Super watery, yeah. So did you, did you cover how we can uh, yeah. prevent so that? I use a salad spinner. Salad, salad spinner. Spin Great. it. Oh. Or if you don't have a salad spinner, you can just put a paper towel, a kitchen towel inside a colander. Just wet it. Yeah, okay. exactly. Oh, that's that's what I do. Did I add too much of the pesto? No, that's gorgeous. I love it. So beautiful. And that's just we'll some sea salt. salt. And then yeah. some and some of our good extra virgin olive oil yeah. from Spain. Well, uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. You know, we'll see. Yeah, okay. It can, be, it can be Greek as well, but add a little bit more of that just to get that fruity olive oil. You know what? I, I hear what you're saying though, because the the um, olives in Spain are very pungent. They are. They're super fragrant. Yeah. Go ahead and add some dill to garnish. As you're garnishing this, I'll ask you, but I know your health journey has uh, led you to become very good friends with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, Of yeah. all people. How, how did that come about? Well, you know, she started as a guest in my restaurant uh, years ago, and we just were totally aligned on our message around food and well-being, and we've become friends over the years, and so we've gotten to collaborate on a ton of stuff together, which is really cool. Oh, good. Oh. Yeah. We've got, a, we've got a couple things coming up, which I can't really talk about yet. Okay, okay, oh, so okay. But, uh, but things, right. Exactly, but things coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned. So when they happen, you can come back and talk about exactly, it. Exactly, yeah, no, I'll be back <laughs> on soon, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Super delicious. Oh, this. Thank you cool. for sharing your My recipe pleasure. and your Thank journey you as so well, much, everybody. Thank you so much, And as always, the full recipe is at hallmarkchannel.com. And for more mm -hmm. from Seamus, be sure to grab a copy of his book, Real Foods Heal, and that is the truth.